Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. I've got something cool here from Reolink. So it seems like I've reviewed like a million cameras from Reolink over the years, but one thing I haven't reviewed is one of their NVR units, and that's what this is today. This is the RNLRL. Okay, let me start over. This is the RLN 16-410. And there are actually a couple versions of this. There's like a 5MP version and like a 4K version. I'm not sure exactly which this one is. It's supposed to be the 4K. It does say V2, so maybe, maybe that's what that indicates. Now, the only thing really on the box is just the warranty. And it just talks about uh, it comes with a two-year warranty, which is fine. So now let's get this thing out of the box. So it comes with some pretty heavy closed cell foam because the box looks like it did take a nice impact here and squash the corner but hopefully the unit is well protected and uh, I don't see anything that indicates there's any damage so looks like the foam did its job let's take another look yeah I don't see any I don't see any damage so here is the main unit and these things from the ones that I have looked out uh, they all look about the same it's almost like they're coming out of the same factory and the manufacturers just license the factory to put their name on it but and there's nothing wrong with that okay so again this is the this is the main unit. you can see this is a 16 channel so we have 16 Ethernet ports. These should be PoE or power over Ethernet. There's your uh, Ethernet port there to hook up to your local network, a VGA output, an HDMI output, one USB port, audio out, on off switch, and a uh, uh, plug there for your power or a port there for your power to supply power to the unit. You can see on the bottom here there's one hard drive included and there's room actually for a second hard drive. So I'll open the case up here a little later and we'll look inside. Uh, there's a little fan, a little cooling fan, so it must get a little toasty in there. And then a vent on this side. There is the usual yeah, operation uh, manual or operator manual. And it's always good to take a quick glance through these, even if you've set these up before. It's good to become familiar with the details. Okay, so you get a little Ethernet cable, a little bag of machine screws. Uh, an HDMI cable, your own mouse, look at that, power cable, actually that does not go to the unit directly, you got your power brick here and this is what supplies the power to the unit itself because the input here is 120 volts AC and the output is 48 volts, 2.5 amps out. All right, so going through the instructions in the manual, and it's in several languages, uh, basically it tells you to get everything connected, everything hooked up, and I have not powered it on yet. And my hope is that all of my cameras that are on my network will come through my network cable there because I do not have any actual cables, or cameras I should say, plugged in to the back just yet. And then after I get everything powered up, uh, you can add the NVR to your Reolink app and you can get that app installed on your iPhone or your Android. But there's a QR code over there that you scan in and that should uh, immediately link the NVR to your Reolink app. Okay, so now uh, I'll go ahead and plug it in and let's see what happens. All right. I hear it spooling up. And there we go. And it may take it a moment here to fully boot up. So while it's doing all of that, let's look at the front real quick. So it does have a front USB port. This is a little, uh, this is like your receiver for a uh, remote. Now it doesn't come with the remote, but you can get one of those from Reolink. There's the power LED, the hard drive activity LED, and it's coming up right now. Looking over here, we've got some buttons. I'll have to figure out exactly what all these do, but obviously the menu one and select are pretty obvious. And then you've got 
your arrow buttons there. So now I'll get logged into this. Oh, look, the cameras are already coming up. Cool. One thing I want to point out earlier, I mentioned that this little uh, receiver here, this little looks like a button, but it's not. Uh, if you called Real Link or contacted Real Link, they would give you a remote for that. And actually, uh, if they ever did, they don't anymore. I, I'd seen some posts about that, but I actually contacted Real Link and they uh, do not supply a remote control for this unit. And now it's walking me through the various setup screens. So now I selected the hard drive. It is a three terabyte hard drive. So it's basically uh, initializing it. So it says, uh, it's, my guess is it's formatting it. So uh, it's asking you to clear all the data. Well, there's really not any data there to clear. So while it does that, oh, that was fast. Okay, so I guess that's done. Go to next. And then it basically brings up a list of uh, all your cameras. Now I got into it through the main menu, but uh, you still have a list of all the cameras that it found. And then you have to go through and enter the password manually uh, for each one of the cameras to be, uh, and I guess, basically enabled and they start to populate your screen there. I'm not entirely sure why this one here popped in because I don't think that's even, yeah, that's just a regular IP camera. That's not even a real link camera. So anyway, uh, I tried plugging in a keyboard that I have over here and it did not like that. Uh, that sure would, sure would have been a lot easier if I could just type that in with a keyboard instead of this virtual keyboard. But I guess it is what it is. And the cameras are starting to populate now. It, it took it a moment, but they're slowly coming online. So now I just have to go through each one, get the password in there, and it should be good. And it's time to take the top cover off and take a look inside at what's going on. There's the circuit board. You'll notice the main hard drive there. But what is interesting, and I sort of pointed that out earlier, is there's a second bay here for a second hard drive. And there's actually a second power connector and a SATA cable connector there for another hard drive. So that's already built in. All you need to do is add the uh, additional hard drive if you want to. So the question I would have is if you add a second hard drive, does it split the channels between the two drives or does it fill one drive up and uh, continue recording on the next drive and sort of cycle through the drives that way? Uh, I don't know. I'll see if I can find that out. But really, I guess it doesn't matter how it records as long as it records your streams to the hard drive. And then over here is the little fan. And it's actually sucking air in from the side and blowing it uh, across the circuit board there to keep things cool. Now, one thing to keep in mind is this NVR, and I would think any NVR, they're not really designed to work with battery cameras. Your battery cameras uh, are really designed for intermittent viewing and intermittent recording. They're not set up or designed to constantly stream to a recording device. You would absolutely destroy your battery in no time, even if you have a solar panel on it, if you were constantly feeding video uh, to a recording device. So just keep that in mind. It's really for uh, wired or powered cameras uh, that are really meant for constant streaming. So the big question that I had going into this was, do I have to plug my cameras into these uh, ports? And the answer is no. It can pick up uh, any of the cameras that are on your local area network or your, your LAN, and uh, it will recognize them, and then you can access them. Wow, I just realized as I'm reviewing this today, uh, the snow is really starting to accumulate. And looking at the front buttons here, I like this one here. You push it and your screens toggle between the different viewing modes. Of course, you can access that through the menu using the mouse also, but this is kind of nice to be able to toggle through those. And looking at the main menu here, of course, these are all your items down the side here that you can select. And each one has tabs across the top here that you can go around and select all kinds of parameters that you can adjust. Uh, I'm not really going to go through all of them here. They're just too many to, uh, to really go through each one. All right, so this is a big update here. Real Link uh, updated their firmware so that their interface here, and to me this is a game changer because I really didn't like the old interface. It was clunky. 
like so many other NVRs, it's like the same people were writing the code for the uh, GUI. And now this one, this update mirrors the PC app. It's not exactly the same, but it's very, very close. And this is so nice. To me, this is a game changer. Uh, this puts this NVR leaps and bounds ahead of the others I've looked at. So this was a very, very necessary change or an update here. I absolutely love it. Like I said, it's not exactly like the PC app, but it's very, very similar. So I can click and still view my individual cameras here. But uh, this is nice. And way overdue in my opinion, but I'll take it. The only thing I don't like is uh, when you plug into the USB port down here, like if you want to do a keyboard, uh, it still doesn't work. Keyboard doesn't work. You have to use the virtual keyboard, which, yeah, that sucks. But, you know, again, uh, it's greatly overshadowed by the improvement here of the new firmware. So I'm absolutely thrilled with it. Now, something else I've noticed, a um, couple of my open channels here. I can pick up some of my other cameras and uh, it works with real link cameras just fine. No issues. Uh, some of my non real link cameras I can pick up, but they, they seem to be a little sporadic. They'll, they'll, they'll connect for a little while and then they'll go offline and then they'll kind of come back online. And I really didn't spend any time, you know, trying to tweak them or mess with them because I'm really just trying to focus on it's a real link NVR. It's made to work with real link cameras. So, if it works with real link cameras, to me, that's all that really matters. If you can get another camera to work with it, I guess that's a bonus. But for me, it's doing what it's supposed to do, so I'm happy with it. So this is really nice. Like I said, I can uh, access a camera. I can click here, get my PTZ control. This is the new real link uh, E1 Outdoor. And uh, I can pan, tilt, zoom wherever I want, right here from the interface. It's just so much better than what it was. And let's see, I think I can turn. I don't see it, okay. I thought there was a way to turn the light on, but maybe not. Anyway, then I can go into playback here and I can look at the different times, see what's going on. So uh, this is really nice. There I am sitting out front. Anyway, so again, the improvement here. I know I keep going on and on about it, but I'm, uh, I'm really impressed with it. So let me zoom out. Give it a moment to focus. thinking about it. There we go. Uh, accessing the playback here is, uh, is so nice because what I can do is, uh, here we go, here's the playback. So I can look at any time here, give it a moment to populate the timeline. And uh, let's go, let's take a look at yesterday and see what it comes up with. And let's look at alarms only. Oh, camera channel. I have to pick the channel. So let's pick, uh, let's see, let's pick this one and let's pick this one. So we'll have two on there. Okay, single screen playback. That's fine. We'll just do this one. There we go. Okay, so now I can just come along here and click along this timeline and very quickly I can go in the morning or the night and look at the feed from the camera. So again, uh, very nice NVR. Now on the playback, I can play back up to four channels that I can select. So. This is earlier today, 
and I can bounce around here on the timeline and it will show me the video from that time period. So this is really nice. Very convenient. Actually, that's from, uh, that's from yesterday. And then, of course, you can cut sections here. You can do your download if you want to download this. Uh, let's see, for example, so if I want to cut, I can move these bars here. If I want to save a certain segment of uh, video, so we'll just do a very short section here. And then I can do a save. And I have to put a USB stick in there, but uh, that's one way to back up uh, a video clip. So if you've got something that happened and you want to save it uh, remotely, you can save it off on a USB stick. Okay, here's the uh, interface through the smartphone app. This is my iPhone. So these are my normal cameras that are individually in there, separate. And then if I do a quick swipe, now I'm looking at the NVR feed. So it's the RLN 16-410. You can see I've got four channels that are open for cameras that I can add in the future. But since these are connected directly to the NVR and that's where the feed is coming from, they connect here to my phone pretty quickly. It's not instant, but it's fairly fast. And it's the same thing with the playback. Now one other thing, of course, this is logging directly into the NVR, so that monitor output is uh, from the NVR. But if you wanted to, you can log into this. If you know the IP address, which you can get through the NVR or through your PC app, your phone app, I should say, uh, I can log into this. I can just type the uh, IP address and you can log in, which is the way this is set up right now. It's kind of clunky. I can only look at like one channel at a time and uh, I wouldn't advise using this. You can, but it's kind of, uh, like I said, it's kind of clunky. It works, gets the job done if you absolutely had to, but I would definitely go through uh, the NVR interface or uh, the interface on your phone app. All right, so I checked again and there just happens to be another firmware update. So I downloaded it to the USB stick and uh, unzipped it. And then you come over here and you look at, uh, you go over to the maintenance section and this upgrade IPC from USB, this is if you want to upgrade an individual camera, which we are not doing. We're doing the actual NVR. So you come back over here to upgrade. And uh, you have to select the right USB port. So there's a port on the back that the mouse is plugged into and a port on the front. So if I can get the right one selected here. There we go. And there's the file. So we select the file. You want to make sure you uncheck this restore to default settings or you will overwrite all of your existing camera settings, which we don't want to do. So then we hit the upgrade. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the information there. So now it starts the upgrade process and it takes a few minutes. And I know something's going on because my little USB drive is flashing. And yep, looks like it's rebooting. All right, so it booted back up and I logged in. Uh, I, I kind of looked around a little bit and whatever the changes were, uh, they're not real obvious. So when you go back to the actual real link site and you can see right there, it tells you what it did. So it optimized UI interaction, optimized email test error codes, and copywriting, solved hard drive, smart display error and solved other known bugs. So Nothing there jumps out as anything major that you would really even notice, but it's always good to run the latest firmware version. All right, so this 16 channel power over ethernet NVR with the ability to add a second hard drive inside. This one comes with a three terabyte hard drive. Uh, this is also the same one that's available with several different camera packages. You just have to check out the real link website or you can buy it uh, separately individually like this. Right now the retail is $299. Uh, keep your eye out though. Real Link has sales all the time. Amazon, you know, the pricing on Amazon is uh, usually all over the map. But the single most thing that, that I take away from this is the huge improvement that the firmware, the interface here made for me. 
So now this functions very much like the PC app. Huge improvement. That alone is a deal maker for me. So I think the $299 price tag for what you get. And like I said, the ability to connect to some other non real link cameras I think is there, but I wouldn't necessarily hang my hat on it. Uh, but it's really made for real link cameras and it does that job quite well. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.